Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Well, spring is finally just around the corner, and many of North Carolina's native plants are beginning to bloom. One place to learn all about our state's native plants is the North Carolina Botanical Garden in Chapel Hill, where producer John Bullenbacher learned plants aren't the only thing that's green. The North Carolina Botanical Garden in Chapel Hill opens its doors early in the warm months. And in a day and age when our natural places seem to be slowly slipping away, it's more popular than ever. This garden is uh, very much devoted to uh, issues of conservation and environmentalism. And you see that reflected in the outdoor garden because um, I think what people mostly remember about us are the native wildflowers of North Carolina. North Carolina is a tremendously important uh, hot spot of diversity for the country as a whole in terms of plant diversity. Many unique plants here, many wonderful plants for gardens. And so this connects the garden itself to nature. I mean, we're, we're talking about the abundance of, of uh, plants, both used in a garden setting, but ones that come right from our own natural landscapes. And it also talks about the importance of conserving those natural landscapes. And as you walk around the garden, you can feel like you're taking a quick walk around the entire state of North Carolina. Um, we have a mountain collection, we have a coastal plain collection, a shade garden, a border of native perennials. We have many of the uh, southeast's most special and unique plants scattered about in the collections. Um, so uh, there are many things to see, uh, whether it's on our nature trails or in our garden. But of course, everybody's favorite carnivorous plant is the Venus flytrap. And um, that's known the world over from horror movies, computer games, and all that. But you know, its total world range is a 60-mile circle around Wilmington, North Carolina. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. It, that's what folks will remember. That's what we're famous for. We have a tremendous collection, for example, of native carnivorous plants. And, and North Carolina is really famous for the number of species of, of those insect-eating plants that we have. Well, it's a beautiful day, and uh, we love nature. So uh, I thought uh, it would be a good time for the girls to come out and enjoy that. It's my first time here, and I think it's just great. I think it's a great uh, place for uh, people to come and, and enjoy nature. Uh, I think it's great for the uh, community. I think it's the combination of I love to garden, so I love to come and see what's blooming and what plants they have and the native plants, but then we also love the trails you know, to go up and, and just have a chance to take a hike and not have to go too far. But the most special thing about the garden these days may not even be a plant. Well, this year we've opened this fabulous new education center. Um, it's, uh, it's a building that's been designed to achieve a very high standard environmentally, and this garden has always been a environment and conservation focused garden and this new space just gives us tremendous opportunity to invite folks in for uh, classes, for meetings, we have exhibit space. And the idea that if we needed an educational building to help us with all of our programs, it was just very natural for that to also be planned as a, a demonstration of the best uh, design practices. There's a geothermal heat exchange system that reduces the energy needs for heating and cooling by a third. There are photovoltaic panels that will gener generate renewable solar power. There are rain water cisterns that collect all the, the water that falls on the roof of this building for use in the outdoor irrigation. We used the trees that grew on this site for lumber. We had every tree that had to be cut for construction taken to a lumber mill, made into boards, and brought back to the site. Um, so there are many features like that. It's all well and good that the center is impressively green, but how does it function as a building? Yeah, I came to the annual Outdoor Educators Symposium here, and it was wonderful. Yeah, and it's very functional too. They've done a great job. The main classroom building was nice. It was a big open-air conference room. And then here in the classrooms, uh, we had different classes, and it was really neat how they controlled the temperature with the overhang and had the windows opening where rain couldn't get in, but the breeze could come through. As nice as the new education center is, its greatest importance may not be as a meeting space, but as an example of how we can continue to preserve our natural places. 
Uh, to us, it's the opportunity to sort of show how uh, we human beings should build in a way that reduces our environmental impact. Just one more reason to visit the North Carolina Botanical Garden this summer. The North Carolina Botanical Garden is on Old Mason Farm Road in Chapel Hill, and it's open seven days a week. For more information, give them a call at 919-962-0522, or check them out online at ncbg.unc.edu. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.